last class we were we had done with the revision of carbon and compounds okay and in that carbon and compounds i think now everyone is clear with the nomenclature with the oxidation reduction just one i think last class in the class So see here, uh, in the last class, we had done about the carbon compounds. We have done about their, in the carbon and compounds, we have done their nomenclature. So anyone having any doubt in the nomenclature? Sir, I have a doubt in another topic, sir. Okay. Okay, Shesi, what's your doubt? So the question, it is an objective question, sir. It says in humans, the life processes are controlled and regulated by mm -hmm. the first option is reproductive or endocrine system. Second is respiratory and nervous system. C1 is endocrine and digestive system. And then D1 is nervous and endocrine system. Okay. What shall be the answer for this? As per you, uh, what should what should be the answer as per you? So nervous and endocrine system. Nervous and endocrine system. Okay. And what about the reproductive system? So, but that does not control our life processes, right, sir? Okay, just uh, read the question once more. Read the question once more. So the question says that in humans, the life processes are controlled and regulated by. Okay, life processes are controlled and regulated by. Fine, the endocrine system and the uh, nervous system. Yes, sir. Okay, so I thought about the, if you're talking of the reproduction. Okay, so in the life processes, we do not consider uh, reproduction as a necessary part of the life process. Okay, as there are many organisms which are not capable of reproduction, which cannot reproduce. Like anyone in the case of human beings, there are hermaphrodites which cannot reproduce. Okay, since they cannot reproduce, so still they are uh, living beings and they are carrying out their life processes. So we do not consider the life uh, living uh, in the living beings, we do not consider reproduction as a necessary criteria. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other doubt? Yeah, yes, sir. One more doubt I have, sir. Okay. You are given four bulbs of 25 watt, 40 watt, 50 watt, and 60 okay, just watt. Wait. Just wait, wait. Okay, okay. You are given uh, four bulbs of? 25 watt, mm -hmm. 40 watt, 50 mm -hmm. watt, and 60 watt. Okay, 50 watt and 60 watt. Which of them has the lowest resistance? Okay. See, uh, if you obtain of one the resistance, so the power will be equal to V squared over R. Okay. So, resistance is inversely proportional to power. Yes, so, which sir. one will have the highest resistance? 60 watts. So, 60 watt will have the highest resistance or 25 watt will have the highest resistance? Oh, sorry, sir. Highest is uh, high 25. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So 25 watt will have the highest resistance. See, uh, why we use V square by R? You have other option also. Like if you want to use I square R. Okay. <clears throat> but this cannot be utilized as all the bulbs, they are operated at a common potential. Their power ratings, they are for a common potential of 220 volts. Okay. So yes, that sir. is why we will be using the formula V square by R. Any other doubts to anyone? Any doubts to anyone? Yeah. Sir, I have one more question, sir. 
okay sir but i think i might have to send you this because this has a diagram sir okay so send that until then i'm looking for if there is anyone who is having any other doubt manan uh, are you having any doubt manan vedika amatur rahman ki subha charvik and mm, so I'll not you no doubt no sir okay see i know one formula okay shall i tell you the formula is more study more doubt and no study no doubt okay so if you do not have any doubts that simply reflected more study means more doubts and no study means no doubts okay so i hope you have uh, you are solving some questions and if you solve any question you will be finding problem okay otherwise i expect that you will be getting 100 on 100 in science can i expect 100 on 100 from everyone manan Amatur Rahman, everyone will provide me hundred or hundred. I still have your test for the evaluation, so I have not evaluated. That will be evaluated today or today itself. Uh, however, I have, your last test was evaluated and you got your scores. Fine. So, anyways, we continue with the carbon and compounds. Then after that, we will revert back to this chapter. uh not this chapter basically uh life processes right so let's see from the carbon and compounds and we will be solving out some assignments from that which will clarify our doubts since you do not have your doubts your doubts will come up when you solve this question okay otherwise you can use my formula so what's the formula just one minute carbon compounds so i send my doubts yeah okay uh I hope all of you know how to make the isomers. Yes. Okay. Uh, here I have a small one. Then I will be giving you some bigger ones also. one minute wait and for another one minute i have some of them so just let me them let me open them all at once and then i share all of you turn on your camera so that i am able to see all your cute faces you are not able to hide them out See the pentane with the molecular formula C five H twelve has how many covalent bonds? Pentane with molecular formula C five H ten, how many covalent bonds will be there? You can make the structure. Okay, I am getting some of the answers. Okay. 
Shreyasi Menon Mahek give give the answer. Vedika also give the answer. Okay, so everyone is giving the answer 16. So the correct answer is 16. K Subha Charvik is giving D 15. So K Subha Charvik count the bonds. There are 12 bonds with hydrogen atoms and 4 bonds between carbon and carbon. Okay, so 12 plus 4 will make it 12 plus 4 will make it 16. Then, which of the following statements is incorrect regarding a homologous series? See, homologous series, they are the series of carbon compounds which have uh, similar uh, structures, but they differ only by the number of carbon atoms. So, compounds in homologous series which can have the same or different functional group. Compounds in homologous series have very less similarity in chemical properties. Difference between the two successive compounds in a homologous series differ by a CH2 group. And successive members in a homologous series differ in molecular mass by 14 units. Okay. You have to spot the incorrect. Okay. So here the incorrect statement, it seems out to be 1 and 2. 1 and 2, they seem out to be the incorrect statements. So therefore, we uh, remove those 1 and 2. So your correct option will be option A. Then, which of the following aliphatic compounds is saturated molecule? Okay. So, first of all, you must be thinking, what are aliphatic compounds? Let me clarify this word. However, without understanding the meaning of the aliphatic compounds, you will be able to solve this. But still, let me clarify, what do you mean by the aliphatic compounds? The two types of compounds you have is aliphatic and aromatic. Okay. Aromatic, as the word suggests, see, you have the compounds, aromatic compounds and aliphatic compounds. And last one, you have the cyclic compound. Aromatic compounds, the word comes from aroma. So, these are the compounds which have a typical smell, typical aroma. Those compounds, they are called as aromatic compounds. For example, phenyl that you use. The phenyl, the typical smell of phenyl, you can identify that yes, a phenyl has been used up. Okay. So that aroma, that means fragrance comes from them. Those are the aromatic compounds. Aromatic compounds, they generally include a benzene ring. They use a benzene ring. Such compound, or you can say the compounds of benzene are called as aromatic compounds. Aliphatic compounds, these are chain compounds, like we have made the structures. And cyclic compounds, we have already seen, they are the, which forms the cycles, they are the cyclic compounds. So, understood all the three words? Aromatic, aliphatic. Yes, sir. So, which of the following aliphatic compounds is saturated molecule? So, the saturated molecules... Is there only one option or two options? One option. Is only one option is correct for the saturated? Yes, sir. Which one? C4H10. Yeah, right. yeah. Option D, C4H10 is saturated. All others are unsaturated. Okay. C6H12 will have a double bond in between. C2H2 will have a triple bond. C5H10 will have a double bond. And C4H10 will have all the single bond. As it is an alkane, it follows the formula CnH2n plus 2. Three uh, of the four compounds belong to homologous series. Identify the odd one out. Okay, So you identify which of them 
is not belonging to the homologous series. So you have to frame their uh, formula, which chemical formula suits them. So this one, C4H10, it is an alkene with the general formula CnH2n plus 2. This is C2H4. Its general formula is CnH2n. This is C3H8. Its general formula is CnH2n plus 2. This is also CnH2n plus 2. So the different one is BC2H4. Okay, so almost everyone has sent the B answer. Which of these is not a property of carbon? Catenation, tetravalency, formation of ionic compounds or tendency to form multiple bonds. Okay, I got four answers in this question and all options say it's option C. That is incorrect. Okay. So I'll just case the bar charvi. Can you tell what is catenation? Bond. Yeah, what is catenation? Like it's type of the bond bonding of some. No. Amatu Raman, can you tell what is catenation? Uh, it is the ability of the carbon atom to form bonds with other atoms of carbon or other atoms of some element. The ability of carbon atom to form long chain bonds with other carbon atoms. Or you can say the self-linking property of the carbon atom to form long chain bonds is called catenation. Okay. So I hope you will remember this definition of catenation. These two definitions, they are important catenation and tetravalency okay so manan can we redefine catenation the catenation is the property yeah. of the carbon atom to form long chains okay the property of the carbon atom to form long chain bonds with itself okay that is the self linking property of the carbon it is forming long chain bond with itself Right? That is catenation. Then tetravalency. So what is tetravalency? What is tetravalency? It is the ability of carbon atoms to uh, it has four bonds which are, can be completed by two uh, uh, with four heteroatoms or uh, other hydrogen atoms. Tetravalency means the ability to form four bonds with the neighboring atoms is called as tetravalency. Okay. Sir, can you repeat it again? For tetravalency? Yes. Sir. The ability of an atom to form four bonds with the neighboring atoms. Four bonds. Tetra means four. So? Yes? So there are allotropes of carbon and as well as silicon, sir. But then why there are not many of silicon? Silicon can form only up to four silicon. It can combine with the four silicon atoms to form the bonds. Why is that, sir? Why is that? That is on the structure. The structure means if you get to that, silicon has vacant d orbitals. And that is a unique property of carbon. Unique property means the balance between its uh, positive and negative charges, the amount of valency it can hold. Right. For, for example, even if you go for silicon, so silicon will some way be able to donate some electrons. So that is how you observe that silicon lies in the case of uh, uh, semiconductors. Right. Whereas, whereas carbon is present in uh, carbon 
it's not in the semiconductor. Either it is a conductor or it's an insulator. Yes. So, so the metal that is not present in the carbon family. Can you find out the metal that is not present in the carbon family? Sir? Yes? Sir, I didn't understand this question. Can you explain? Carbon family. Okay. So basically, you will not also understand this question, what they are talking of the carbon family. Carbon family means uh, the elements belonging to the group which to which the carbon belongs. So for this, for this, you need to look up for the periodic table. Okay, and that part is currently not in your syllabus. So uh, below carbon, you will find silicon. So carbon and silicon, they belong to the same group. So for, to solve this question, you need the help of the periodic table, but that leave that since the periodic table is not in your cell. Now, which among the following is an unsaturated molecule that has the molecular formula of cycloalkane? So, which of them is an unsaturated one? Out of the given ones, which one of them is an unsaturated? C3H6. C3H6 and? C3H4. Okay, C3H6 and C3H4. Both are unsaturated. And which one of them can you form a cycloalkane? Try to form a cycloalkane with C3H6 and with C3H4. With both of them, try to form a cycloalkane. Alkane means you have these three carbon atoms and there should just be single bond between them. Here also there should just be a single bond between them. So if you find single bond between carbon and carbon and make the other bonds with hydrogen, so which is the formula you are getting then? A. A options. A. So option A is correct, not D. See, for D, it will not be cycloalkane, it will be some cycloalkene. Then, which of the following statement is correct about the given electron dot structure? So, which statement is correct? Say yes and answer. Okay. She has sent two answers. Amatu Rahman has just sent one. Okay. Amatur no, sir, that's my previous answer, sir. Okay. So, Amatur Rahman, then other answers. Vedika, what's your answer for this question? No, I think A. You think A. Okay, so why not? Why don't you make the structure out of it? Why go wrong? Make the structure from the electron dot structure. Okay. From the electron dot structure, make the structure. Rene? Rene? Uh, Rene, can you make the bond structure from the given electron dot structure? Rene? 
okay uh, vedika have you sent the answer i got some of the answers right okay clear and is unable to mahak has sent the answer let's see which one will be correct so for c if you draw the structure for this carbon so this carbon will have three hydrogen bonds right this carbon also has three hydrogen now the carbon can form just one more bond and you can see here two electrons are there in between these two so one of the electron is being shared from here and one of the electron is shared from here so since both the carbon they are sharing one one electron so therefore it will be a single bond between carbon and carbon okay so the correct option will be the compound formed is formed of all single bonds of which one is a carbon carbon bond so all bonds are single and one is a single bond between carbon and carbon so how many of you got it correct then okay. some of you had sent the answer as a i think now i think you can solve you got the answer so which of the following is unsaturated molecule from the given molecule which of the following is an unsaturated molecule check with their general structure which one of the following okay see c3h8 it is saturated c2h2 it is unsaturated and you can see all others are saturated so your option will be b b okay everyone has sent b on then third homologue of the alkyne series so from the alkyne series which one will be the third analog from the alkyne from the alkyne the third uh, third one which will which one will be there at the third position Okay. Manan, Amaturaman, Shesi, Vedika. Okay, so in this question, people are confused. I got three options up to now. See, alkyne means there should be a presence of triple bond between carbon and carbon atom. Okay. So if you draw a triple bond between carbon and carbon atom, so how many minimum carbon you require? What is the minimum number of the carbon atoms? Two. Two. So the first member is with the two carbon atoms. This is your first member. Okay. Then the second member will be, will have three, car, uh, three carbon atoms. And the third member will have four carbon atoms. So which option should be there? C option. Option C, it's butyne. Any doubts to anyone? I think your doubts were clarified only when I drew the first one, that's first family member. Okay. Sir, what and no, in alkene? Yeah, yeah, what? In alkene also like this. It start but, from... but the question is alkyne. Uh, yes, for alkene also it will be the same thing. Okay. Okay, for alkene also the option will be the same. Okay. So many people have got this one as incorrect. You know, you should try it out. Okay. Number of covalent bonds in a cyclobutane age. Number of covalent bonds in cyclobutane each. So how many number of the covalent bonds?
साइक्लोब्यूटेन ड्रॉ द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ साइक्लोब्यूटेन देर विल बी फोर बॉन्ड्स बिटवीन कार्बन एंड कार्बन एंड देर विल बी टू हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स विद ईच कार्बन एट आई होप यू हैॉट द करेक्ट आंसर दैट इज ट्वेल्व द नंबर ऑफ कोवेलेंट बॉन्ड्स इन साइक्लो ब्यूटेन इज ट्वेल्व then which of the following is not an alkene alkene or alkyne so it's not an alkene it's not an alkene or not an alkyne so it's not any of them ch4 c2h2 ch3 and c5hh so as we can see all of them they are following the general formulas they are uh, either alkenes alkenes or alkynes it's only ch3 which is not any of them so answer will be ch3 then which of the following statement regarding homologous series is wrong you have to identify the wrong one Okay. So I got four answers. Let's see. So out of the four answers, all represent option A. So I will also go with you. That's option A is correct. Okay. So here option A is correct. And fourteenth, which of the following homolog does not belong to the given homolog series? C two H four. Option D does not belong to the alkenes. All others are alkenes. C two H four does not belong to the alkenes group. Sir, how does C eight H eighteen belong to alkenes? Now check the general formula. C n H two n plus two. Two times eight is sixteen, and sixteen plus two is eighteen. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it is an alkene. It is an alkene. Just the assertion and reason also to be quick. Uh, following questions consist of two statements: assertion and reason. Uh, so diamond and graphite are allotropes of carbon. The assertion is true. Some elements can have several different structural forms while in the same physical state. These forms are called allotropes. Okay, so its uh, assertion is also correct, and reason is also correct, and both are reason is explaining the assertion. It explains why. Uh, Sir, but they are saying they are in the same physical state. Why? Diamond is hard, graphite is brittle. So, by the physical state, we mean both are solids. Physical state. Okay, right. Okay. So, by the physical state, both are solids. So, assertion and reason both are correct. The state of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. assertion carbon compounds can form chain branched and ring structures 
कार्बन एक्जिबिट द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ कैटिनेशन तो बोथ आर करेक्ट इट हैज द सेल्फ लिंकिंग प्रॉपर्टी आल्सो सो बोथ आर करेक्ट द करेक्ट ऑप्शन विल बी ए देन ग्रेफाइट इज अ गुड कंडक्टर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दैट इज ट्रू इट हैज वन फ्री वैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन सो ग्रेफाइट हैज अ वन वैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन this is also correct it has one valence electron we saw in the structure of graphite that there is one free electron okay so therefore graphite conducts electricity then diamond is not good conductor of electricity that is also correct it has no free electrons that is also correct okay so all are your option a leave these come to the subjective questions descriptive type questions <coughs> okay uh, start with question 2 leave the uh, first one as it talks of some periodic uh, group number and period number so which you do not know let's come to question 2 identify the following an allotrope of carbon which has two dimensional layered structure consisting of flat hexagonal rings so which allotrope of carbon are they talking of graphite graphite okay an allotrope of carbon which looks like a soccer ball buckminster fullerene yeah it's buckminster fullerene an allotrope of carbon which contains both single and double bonds is there any allotrope of carbon which contains both single and double bonds suit yeah is there any allotrope of carbon which contain both single and double bond so is it the suit suit ओके कोई डजन मैटर यू सर्च फॉर दिस यू सर्च फॉर दिस एंटर ओके नेक्स्ट वन अ हाइड्रोकार्बन मॉलिक्यूल कंटेन्स थ्री कार्बन एटम्स हाइड्रोकार्बन मॉलिक्यूल कंटेन्स थ्री कार्बन एटम्स what would be its molecular formula in case it is an alkene an alkene and an alkyne so obtain the molecular formula there should be three carbon atoms Sir, send me answer. Okay. So for the third one, your answers should be. Say, I got five answers. Okay, I think everyone has answered it. But I, yeah, I want the. I don't want the formula. The formula is not asked in the question. in the question formula is not asked it is asked okay molecular formula is only asked fine that's correct then a hydrocarbon molecule has four carbon atoms what would be its molecular formula that also you can do allotropes of carbon have same chemical properties so do the allotropes of carbon have same chemical properties Sir, they are all bad conductors of electricity. Can you see that? They are all bad conductors of electricity. So, conduction of electricity is a physical property or a chemical property? Yeah, that's physical yeah. property, right? Yeah, it is a physical property. Okay. Okay. 
So all the allotropes of carbon, they have same chemical properties. The chemical properties are same. Then how many non-bonded electrons are there in ammonia, methane and nitrogen? Find out the non-bonded electrons. So draw the structure of ammonia and find out the number of non-bonded electrons. Draw the electron dot structure of ammonia, methane and nitrogen. Rene? Rene, are you drawing these structures? Mm. Are you drawing the structures and then telling? So I'm not drawing for all of them. Okay. So you have to, okay, fine. So tell whatever you have, you have done. Yes, right, sir. So for ammonia, how many non-bonded electrons are there? Two, sir. Two. For methane? Is there any non-bonded electron in methane? No, sir. No. In methane, there is no non-bonded electron. And what about nitrogen? Four. Four or two only? Sir, two, two for both the nitrogen. See, nitrogen exists as N2 molecule and in the N2 molecule, the two nitrogen, they are bonded to each other with a, tri with a triple bond. Right? Okay, so two over here, two over here. There's, there are four. Two on each nitrogen, right? So you have four for uh, four in the case of nitrogen molecule, two in the case of ammonia, and zero in the case of methane. Let's see, alkenes and alkynes are unsaturated. What does it mean? So, what does it mean when I say alkenes and alkynes are unsaturated? They have double or triple bond. They have a double or triple bond. Okay. They burn with well, yellow sooty flame. Okay, they burn with a sooty flame. List any two properties of homologous series. Okay, see question number 10. Atom of an element con Atom of an element contains five electrons in the valence shell. This element exists as diatomic molecule and is major component of air. So identify the element. Nitrogen. 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 Show the bond formation between the atoms of this element. So we have already already done it. We have to make it N2 molecule. And what is the nature of bond formed between the two atoms? Triple bond. There's a triple bond in them. Which bond? Triple bond, okay. There will be triple bond, but when you are asked the nature of the bond, it should be either ionic bond or the covalent bond. Right? Covalent bond. Covalent bond. Understand the words when they are asking the nature. So nature means ionic or covalent. Okay, so it's covalent bond. So you will say covalent triple bond is formed between these two, these atoms. Then eleventh, an element X found in nature in solid form has four electrons in valence shell of its atom. Its allotrope Y has properties that allows to be used as a dry lubricant as also a part of pencil lead. So this element is 
कार्बन एंड ग्रेफाइट ओके एलिमेंट इज कार्बन एंड दिस एलोट्रोप वाई इज ग्रेफाइट राइट एनी वन अदर यूज ऑफ द एलोट्रोप अदर देन दो मैं देर any one use of the allotrope conductor of electricity okay it is used as conductor of electricity predict the ability of this allotrope to conduct so it can conduct electricity named other two other allotrope that you can know buckminster fuldens and diamond okay just uh, see this question number 12 and i think we can uh, you can do them very well it does not contain those tough question let's see now to the some other one so the property of carbon atom by virtue of which it forms bond with other carbon which property is it catenation catenation we call that property as catenation the property by which the property of atom carbon atom by virtue of it it forms bonds with other carbon atoms is called catenation ethanol reacts with sodium and forms two products so what are the two products when ethanol reacts with sodium Yes, you see. Sodium ethoxide and hydrogen gas. Okay, sodium ethoxide. Okay, the answer will be sodium ethoxide and hydrogen gas. Vedika, can you draw the structure of sodium ethano eight? All of you, draw the structure of sodium ethano eight and sodium ethoxide. Both need to be drawn. Sodium ethano eight and sodium eth ethoxide. All of you will draw. Rene, Rene, you will also draw. K. Subha Chavrek, you will also draw. Draw the structure of sodium ethano eight and sodium ethoxide. Okay, got this answer? Yes. And I think now you shall check your answer from here. Sodium ethano eight. See, ethano eight is a salt, and it is made when sodium. It is it is made when uh, acetic acid reacts with sodium. So you have ethanoic acid that is CH three COOH when reacts with sodium, so it will form sodium ethanoate CH three COONA. This is your sodium ethanoate. Okay. In the similar way, you can form the others also. Sodium ethoxide is formed when alcohol, that is C2H5OH, reacts with sodium. So you will have here the formation of C2H5ONA, sodium ethoxide. Now the soap molecule has okay, leave that head and tail, but you know that it has a hydrophilic end and a hydrophobic. Okay, so leave it. Physics 
uh, no leave that uh, assertion and region. And uh, come here directly to the section B. So two compounds X and Y have a molecular formula C3H8 and C4H10. Okay, respectively, which one of them of the two is likely to show addition reaction? Which one of them will show addition reaction? X. X will show addition reaction since it is asked. It is an unsaturated hydrocarbon, so it it will show addition reaction. State the differences between ionic and covalent compounds. Okay, Amatur Rahman, can you tell the differences between ionic and covalent compounds? Ionic compounds have high melting and boiling points, while covalent compounds have low melting and boiling points. Okay. Okay, uh, Subhacharya, can you complete the chemical mm -hmm. reactions? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm good. Okay, so uh, write down everyone. Everyone write down the products of these three, A, B, and C. Complete the, uh, the reactions. Complete the reaction A, B, and C. So, K Subha Charvik, uh, will you tell the products? What are the products? Uh, I don't know, so I've written. Uh, I'm not getting. You have not written. Okay. Manal, have you written? Sir, first one, uh, uh, CO2 gas will be formed and water, sir. Okay, in the first one, it will be CO2 plus water. Very good. And in the mm -hmm. second one? Sir, second one, you will get ethene, sir. Ethene. C2. Ethene. H. Okay. So it will be ethene. There will be removal of an H2O molecule from this compound. So if you extract H2O molecule, you will get C2. H4, which will be of C2H4. Then C1 for the C, CH3COOH plus NaHCO3. So, what the product should be? Mehek, can you answer this? What product will be formed? Sir, I do have no idea what it is. See, you will get here. Uh, okay, Shreyasi, can you answer? Yes, sir. It will form CH3COONE, yes, uh, sorry, water and carbon dioxide. Okay. Water and carbon dioxide, fine. Okay, so see. I'm just uh, doing this 17. After that, we'll stop. So, what do you mean by structural isomers? And Rene, can you tell me what is the meaning of structural isomers? So, um, is it like when, like the I, uh, when the atoms are like in different orders? With the same molecular like formula, yeah, you have the same thing, but just put them in proper words. Um, structural isomers is when a molecular formula can have multiple 
uh, orders, atoms, like multiple different See, orders, when, different atoms. When a when a molecule or when a compound has more than one structural formula for the same molecular formula, we call that compound to be a structural isomer. Okay, so bye everyone. I hope we have completed this chapter today. In the next class, we shall start with some portion of bio. Bye.